just like that, the machine quilting is all finished. Welcome back to the Q101 series. We are all done. The entire quilt has been cut and patchworked and pressed and then we built our blocks and we built our rows. We put our borders on, we free motion machine quilted. My goodness, that was fun. And now we are ready to go ahead and put on the binding. The binding finishes off the quilt and all of the layers. And I have already been pre-trimming down the quilt, but I didn't want to get too far ahead of myself. Again, this is supposed to be a quick little step-by-step -step series of videos, but this process, we've got a lot of things to discuss. I might have even been able to do this as two separate videos, the trimming of the quilt and the binding itself. So let's just dive right into this now. As I get ready to trim this quilt, my thing I've been doing for years, no matter how good the quilting turned out, is as we get ready to trim this down, I am now gonna use the line that is created where the border meets the uh, quilt top center for my trimming. Now for me, uh, kind of just my style is to generally not do machine quilting in this last border, but you, most of you probably have or do. Um, either way, you're gonna find, because of the way that the machine quilting happens, we're gonna get a little bit of distortion. So I cut these at two and a half. I can now either cut down at two and a quarter and bring the binding around, uh, or I can cut it two. So for today, I'm just gonna cut it two to make life easy on me, and that's what the other ones are trimmed at. And so when I cut it two, I'm looking at the two inch mark here, so two inches from this outer edge, and I'm going to go ahead and let the line, and anywhere that it doesn't fit perfect, I'm just gonna actually encourage the quilt so that the border itself looks perfectly crisp, perfectly cut at two inches, and that will give the illusion of a very nice and square quilt. You'll notice I'm a strong believer that there is no perfect quilt, so I'm gonna use smoke mirrors and illusions to make it look like it's the perfect quilt, and this is one of my favorite recipes here. Um, normally I'll use a lot of ruler to keep a nice straight cut, but right now I'm looking at this inside line, and so again, I'm gonna go ahead, pull through here, adjust, make sure everything's looking nice and square, as 90 degree as possible at the top or bottom corners. And again, just finishing off this with a two inch trim. Quilt is completely trimmed down now, and now we're ready to build our binding and put it onto the quilt itself. The binding is built the exact same way we did the mitering for the borders. And to do that, basically, what we're gonna start with is we're gonna start with our two and a half inch wide strips. Now that's most people's favorite math for putting on their bindings, is two and a half inches wide by the width of the goods. So these were 44, and then I've already chopped off the selvages because I wanna have good working edges. And just like I said in the other, uh, the way we were doing our putting on our borders, I have been setting these up now so that they have a nice mitered corner. And because I've already made a few of these, I'm gonna need at least five or six to get around this quilt here. So now as I'm going, I wanna remember where my right sides are. So as I come across here, Right now, this is the right side of the fabric. I'm putting on a solid, so there is no wrong side to that other right side. So it's just as a reminder to get that mitered corner, we're gonna go ahead and lay these on here just like this, and we're just gonna sew from this top edge down to the bottom edge like this. It's a good habit to double check to make sure that it's worked. And that when I say what it worked, that means that now our right sides are gonna run in this nice straight line. And you can see this has got a nice mitered corner and that's gonna eliminate the bulk, especially when we put on our bindings here. So I've got one more to do. So I just keep pulling it out this way, make sure that that is right sides up. I grab the next piece here, open it up, and we're just gonna go ahead and do the exact same thing once you're sure that they all work, just come in here and either use a ruler to protect your hands or slow down a little bit and then work your way backwards through all of your binding, making sure that you cut off all that excess in your seam allowance, just like that. And then make sure your iron is nice and warm because we're going to do the pressing for these. That's the next step.
And then as I can begin pressing these, I like to toss one end all the way over the long ironing surface. I'm just gonna take a, a second to make sure now that I know that I have my wrong side up um, because I'm gonna press these in half now with my right sides out. Starting on one end like this, I just fold it over in half. And then I'm just gonna slowly run that nice hot iron over the top of that here. Paying a little attention to make sure that I get those seams really nice down here where the mitered is. Let it cool for a second, because remember, fabric has memory, and then just take a time, and I kind of fold over a few inches at a time, and then I start to roll this up, and I'm just gonna roll it, roll it, roll it. Pull a whole new section over the board, and keep on pressing. Just keep calm and press on. And once your binding is all made and rolled up, we're gonna stitch it starting on the back side of the quilt. Now there are two major trains of thought when it comes to binding a quilt. I'm gonna go with the more modern, less professional, sloppier, but done by machine start to finish method. That's what I'm teaching you here. So let's just, let's give you a little more information, especially for those who are really interested in traditional quilts. Traditionally, the binding is put onto the front of the quilt by machine, rolled to the back of the quilt, and then hand stitched to the back of the quilt. And that way that uh, all the stitching looks beautiful front and back. Like I said, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to the back side of the quilt. I'm gonna start generally in the middle of any one run, one side, but if there is an obvious direction to the quilt, a top and a bottom, I generally start at the bottom of the quilt. If I'm gonna have any area that is unsightly, it will be the last seam where I join the binding when it comes all the way back around because I'm just not perfect that way. Now, the other thing we wanna watch out for though is we're gonna do mitered corners. I'm gonna teach you all how to do mitered corners here real quick. And so what I don't want is I don't want the miter of the seam and the binding, if at all possible, to be at the corner when I get to the quilt. So what I'm gonna to try to do is avoid that by just making sure as I stretch this out here and where I start, I'm good, I'm gold, and I'm happy. And so right now I have the raw edges of the binding facing me and the raw edge of the quilt facing me as I rotate to go towards the machine. I'm gonna start with roughly about an eight to 10 inch tail left over, and that's gonna help me miter in this last corner as well. As I come to the machine, I'm gonna bring this binding roll over to the opposite side and kind of just set it in here out of the way, and just that way I can easily feed as I go. And I'm gonna start with a quarter inch seam allowance and I have an edge guide now to make sure I stay as accurate as possible and that's gonna really help me when I come to the mitered corner as well. Drop our presser foot and rock and roll. We're gonna sew business as usual with all these layers, taking it nice and slow all the way to the corner and the mitered binding has a two-step process. We're gonna miter into the corner and then we're gonna finish it on the front side. So I'll show you both of those techniques here today. And the first of which being, as I'm coming down in here to this first corner to prepare for the miter, what I wanna do is stuff stop roughly a quarter of an inch back. So I'm gonna come down, come down, and I'm actually gonna back stitch when I get to where I think I'm about a quarter of an inch back. Set the back stitch, and then I can actually cut my threads here using an automatic thread cutting system, something like that. And now everything happens within the fold here. So for the fold, I'm gonna rotate this here. I'm gonna bring the binding right at the machine, just up completely fold it back down, and what I'm double checking is 
This edge now here is nice and parallel and the top edge is parallel to the top edge and everything is nice and square looking. And now I'm gonna slide this in under the presser foot to about that quarter inch mark where I left off. I wanna start, if at all possible, at that same spot I left off. And so therefore, I'm gonna stitch in a couple of stitches, back stitch to secure so I can put a little pressure on that later. And now I'm just gonna sew all the way through to the next corner. And at the next corner, I will do that again. Now this is gonna take a little bit, so I'm gonna jump into caffeinated mode and put all of this on and bring you back around right when it's time to join the two pieces of binding tail. So we've just come around that fourth corner now and I'm gonna start to slow down because I'm about, let's say, oh, six or eight inches away from where the binding has begun over here. So I wanna leave a gap that I can work within, but I'm also gonna need to guesstimate where these two tails are gonna come together. So I wanna get close enough that I can figure this, but I don't wanna be too close that I can't then stitch the bindings together and then add them to the quilt. Watch this. So as I come here, like I said, I'm six or eight inches back. I'm gonna go ahead and just lock this stitching in by back stitching. We're gonna cut the thread, we're gonna lift the foot, all that kind of stuff. We're gonna come over here onto the table and I'm gonna make sure there's nothing underneath here like this. And now what I actually like to do is I'm gonna use my scissors for this. I use a line on my mat and I just make a nice straight cut. But what I'm doing is I'm gonna give myself a couple of good inches away from where the stitching is because I need to be able to work within here. So here's my first cut. I cut off that first end and I have plenty going past, okay? Now I used a two and a half inch wide binding strip. So we're gonna now go two and a half inches past this mark, the other direction. And so therefore I'm just gonna go ahead and slide this down to make sure that, so here's one inch, here's a second inch, there's the half. So I come down here, I lay the scissor here again, a nice straight cut like that. Now what we're gonna do though, is we're gonna take these and we're gonna set them up for our miter. So if you got both pieces, easiest way, lift them into the air, take them and open them, twist them together to align those corners. And then we're gonna sew from this outer edge down to this lower edge. And as I start to fold things over, things get a little wild. So I got a good grip here. I'm gonna let the quilt kind of fold onto the table. The edge guide's been moved out of the way at the machine. And I'm really looking at this long edge here so that I can secure. Now this is one of these uh, times I don't actually backstitch because I will admit more often than not, I've had this not go perfectly. And so what I like to do is I like to take it out of the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and double check first of all that it actually even worked. Oh, fantastic, it's heading the right direction. A little sloppy there and I've got the corners pretty dang good. So it is gonna work out. So let's just take our scissors back out now and we're just gonna trim off that excess. Be very careful not to cut the binding below. I like to hit it with the iron real quick. Once it's pressed, we do need to go ahead and get it secured back in. So I'm just gonna drop that presser foot up. I'm gonna go ahead and start stitching, back stitch to secure. And I'm just gonna come over that seam we just made. And sometimes there's a little bit of a ripple. And that's okay, you're just gonna let it fold to the inside because this is all gonna be hidden still, remember? So once I've crossed over the area and I'm into a portion I've already sewn, let's back stitch to lock it down. Okay. Now that's all set up and now all we have to do is we're gonna basically do what I call top stitching. Okay, so now the quilt goes right sides up and we're gonna fold our binding up and over. We're not gonna tug on it, we're not gonna pull on it too much. We're just gonna give a nice even little finger crease over and this is where I like to go ahead and set the edge guide. 
And now as I'm getting ready to set my edge guide, I wanna make sure that I can put the needle as close to the edge of this binding strip as possible. So I'm gonna back my edge guide up a bit. Perfect, I like that a lot. I'm gonna lower my presser foot and I'm gonna just go ahead and start stitching. And hopefully you can see that that's gonna go ahead and stitch right along the edge. So you'd wanna be using matching color thread or the best match you can find right now. Of course, a lot of us are kind of stuck at home and this is what I'm using is a little bit lighter green than I would like but that's okay. And so I'm just gonna stitch down here, heading towards a corner. I'm gonna show you how to finish this corner off, and then you're gonna be all set to finish out all the rest of the binding on your own. You've learned all the steps. You've done terrific in the entire quilt project. Okay, so now as I approach this bottom edge, I'm gonna start paying attention to my corner. And what I'm going to do now is as I get towards the corner, this is where we're stitching along here. This is the area we've got to come to. I like to trim out any thread. So I either use a stiletto or a scissor for this. And so I fold all of, I take my hand here, push it in, lay it, take my stiletto to hold it, bring it up and over. I know my big thumbs are probably in the way for many of you at home there, but you'll be able to see here in a second. I'm going to hold it with that stiletto, and there's my mitered corner. Now I'm gonna sew into that corner. This is also why the stiletto is handy. And now once I see that needle has dropped right into that mitered corner, I can go ahead and uh, the presser foot is already lifted on this machine automatically, so I can now rotate the entire quilt with the needle in the down position. And I can come around out of this corner here and just begin stitching again, keeping that same top stitch edge. And then I just keep tucking with my fingers, tucking with my fingers as I roll that binding over, catching that edge with the top stitching ever so nicely, and it's super simple. I will encourage you to go a little bit slower at this point and take maybe four and six inch sections of binding at a time because you really want it to finish really nice and crisp. You want this top stitching to look terrific as you're doing it because this is one of the last things that folks will see. I'm never as concerned about what the quilts look like from the backside. Just take your time. Roll on through and you are just a few inches away from a very awesome completed quilt. So to all of you brand new quilters out there, I hope there's a few of you, few of you that are really learning along with me as we go here. My name's Rob. I've got a wonderful YouTube channel and there's all kinds of great quilt related videos for you out there and in the future to come. So I hope that you will continue to learn from me right here at Making It Fun.